best smiles with innovative technologies. In 2023, BeSmile launched its digital biomedical production center, uniting medical, education, research and manufacturing. We strive to set a new benchmark in dental industry. With heartfelt passion, we empower our technology and products with user-friendly design and functions. Leveraging intelligent manufacturing, we have established a comprehensive digital dental product portfolio, including all ceramic materials, technology-empowered independent research and production, patent-driven continuous product upgrades, Make every smile brighter with our high-quality products. Revolutionize dental industry with our digital services. We aspire to go further and to do better, striving for excellence with the spirit of craftsmanship. Implementing a scientific quality control system Introducing top-notch international equipment from R&D to production and inspection. Each product embodies our dedication to quality. Through rigorous quality inspection standards, we never stop pursuing for perfection. Creating world-class quality through exquisite craftsmanship. 2013, B-Smile was founded in Chengdu. With a focus on zirconia materials, B-Smile started establishing its presence in the global dental market. 2023, B-Smile proudly established its U.S. subsidiary. From taking our products global to making our brand global, B-Smile embarks on a new journey of globalization. Throughout the 10 years, we insistently move forward, unrelentingly exploring new horizons. We fostered enduring partnerships with over a thousand partners from over 100 countries and regions, jointly creating a new global landscape of dentistry. We gather together teams of diverse talents and innovative minds, inspire ambitious young professionals to make their dreams come true. With our mission in mind, forge ahead towards our vision to become an internationally acclaimed brand and a leading digital dental solution provider worldwide. As time flies forward, we extend our reach from Chengdu to the world. We are sincere, dedicated, practical, innovative, gathering sparks of ingenuity, igniting the future of the digital dentistry. Be smile. Technology creates the best smile. Production Center. Uniting medical, education, research and manufacturing, we strive to set a new benchmark in dental industry. With heartfelt passion, we empower our technology and products with user-friendly design and functions. Leveraging intelligent manufacturing, we have established a comprehensive digital dental product portfolio, including all ceramic materials, digital dental equipment, and implant product series. Technology empowered independent research and production. 
patent-driven continuous product upgrades. Make every smile brighter with our high quality products. Revolutionize dental industry with our digital services. We aspire to go further and to do better. Striving for excellence with the spirit of craftsmanship. Implementing a scientific quality control system Introducing top-notch international equipment from R&D to production and inspection. Each product embodies our dedication to quality. Through rigorous quality inspection standards, we never stop pursuing for perfection. Creating world-class quality through exquisite craftsmanship. 2013, B-Smile was founded in Chengdu with a focus to mark. A20 proudly established its U.S. subsidiary. From taking our products global to making our brand global, B-Smile embarks on a new journey of globalization. Throughout the 10 years, we insistently move forward, unrelentingly exploring new horizons. We fostered enduring partnerships with over a thousand partners from over 100 countries and regions, jointly creating a new global landscape of dentistry. We gather together teams of diverse talents and innovative minds, inspire ambitious young professionals to make their dreams come true. With our mission in mind, Forge ahead towards our vision to become an internationally acclaimed brand and a leading digital dental solution provider worldwide. As time flies forward, we extend our reach from Chengdu to the world. We are sincere, dedicated, practical, innovative, gathering sparks of ingenuity, igniting the future of the digital dentistry. Be smile. Technology creates the best smile. Okay, hello everyone. This is Ian from the Be Smile. And welcome to our webinar. Today, our topic is how to make a high quality lung bridge with zirconia. It will be about 14 minutes. And during the presentation, if you have any question, you can send it to the chanting error, and I will replay you at the end of the presentation. Okay, so let's start. And first, I want to talk about how to define high quality. So it means what is a high quality restoration? And here are some answers, part of the answers, like the shade, about the translucency, about the fit, or the crank problem or deformation problem. And also the, for some implant cases, the aesthetic gingiva is very important. So here are some important um, part of the answers. And I want to ask, which one do you think is the most difficult one in your daily work? And you can type your answer to the chanting error about which one is the most difficult for you about the shade or translucency or feet. Okay, so um, maybe for different labs, the answer will be different. But in our opinion, as a material manufacturer, we think 
The most difficult part is about the feed and about the crack or deformation problem. Because those are greatly dependent on the personal operation. It depends on the personal operation. And it, they are not so controllable like the shade, like the translucency. Because about the shade or translucency, we can do some adjustment in our factory easily. Like we can change the powders, we can change the size of the powder, and also we can add different components of the powder to change the shade and to check in the future. And of course, I hope some of you can avoid some crack head uh, headache about uh, the cornea restoration. Okay, so um, here um, today we will have three parts. The first part, I will share some requirements for the uh, clinic cases, how to choose a suitable clinic cases for the, the cornea restoration. And the second part, I will share the standard operation procedure in the dental lab. And the last part, I will share some crack cases and to analyze why this crack is happened, what is the reason and how we can avoid the crack problem. Okay, so now let's come to the first part about the case requirements. And before we starting to before we start to um, doing the case, the first thing is checking the model. And here are some important aspects we need to check, like the pontic, the insertion path for the abutment teeth the occlusal cervical dimension for the abutment teeth and the undercut and the shoulder and the margin of the teeth. Uh, that's not all the things we need to check, but only five important things. Okay, the first one about the pontic. Uh, we know for some cases, like this picture, uh, th here are three pontics. You can see it is like a liver. But you know, for the cornea, it's a ceramic material. The um, model of the elastic is not so good. So if the absence distance is very big, is the liver will be more obvious and when the bite force when we apply the bite force on the pontic it's like a liver and for the abutment teeth it has a great harm so if we want to make the cornea restoration the cornea bridge here is a pontic limit and for different blacks uh, it has a little bit difference for example for the high strength blacks like for the for RHT plus or ST it has a very high strength so for the high strength black we can make at most two successive pontics in one case and the distance for the missing error is about 30 millimeters no more than 30 millimeters and for the high translucency uh, blacks, because the strength is higher, is lower, so we can only make at the most one successive pontic in one case. So in this picture, you can see it has a three successive pontics, including the molar er uh, molar error, uh, molar error, and the premolar error. So it's not recommended for the the cornea lung bridge but I know for some dental clinics they still uh, want to make uh, the cornea bridge for this kind of case and they will prepare much more teeth for this lung bridge maybe they will prepare this molar and all the anterior region so when they want to get more abutment teeth for the lung 
uh, pontic error, but it's not good for the lateral teeth. So if it's like this, um, for the patient, we don't recommend uh, this the cornea material for this case, this kind of case. And if it's a distal ab absence, distal missing tooth, uh, it will be more difficult because it's like a cantilever if we make restoration like this. And for high strength black, we can only make one distal absence for the molar. And for high translucency blacks, we cannot use it for the um, distal absence restoration. And in the left picture, you can see uh, in the following two pictures, you can see here are two distal absence about the teeth. So it's not recommended. It's also not recommended to use the cornea for the restoration because it will do great harm to our abutment teeth. And every day when we are chewing, uh, it will have some great bite force to our abutment teeth. And after some time, maybe the abutment teeth will fall down or crank. It's possible. So for this kind of case, it's not recommended for the, the cornea restoration. And the second thing is about the insertion path for the abutment teeth. Uh, just like this picture, uh, for, uh, like this picture shows for the bridges, here are several pontic, several abutment teeth. And we need to make sure all the abutment teeth have the same insertion path, just like the red arrow shows. So only in this way, one way, after we design the bridge, the bridge can fit on this model. If not, there will be some undercards. And then later I will show you about the undercut error. Okay, and this is the third thing we need to check. It's about the occlusal cervical dimension. And in short words, it means the height of the teeth. And like this, for the anterior and the premolar teeth, we need to make sure the height of the teeth is more than three millimeters. And for molar, we need to make sure the height is more than four millimeters. Only when the height of the teeth is enough, we can make sure the bridge has a has enough bonding error. And also it can help to anti-rotation of the bridge. Okay, and this one is about the uh, undercut. And like this one, this pic the left picture shows when we are designing the bridge bridges, and here you can see for those two abutment teeth, they don't have the common pass of insertion insertion. Because for this teeth, the insertion pass is from this direction. But for this teeth, abutment teeth, the insertion pass is from this direction. So when we design bridge on this case, normally there will be some undercut for this for this error, for this red error. And sometimes for single crown restoration, there will still some undercut error just like this. It's because the dentist didn't do the tooth preparation well. So and you can see for this uh, lingual um, buckle side uh, for this lingual side, here are some undercut error. And when we design a crown on this abutment teeth, those er error will be empty and it will be filled with uh, cement. So it means the crown has no contact with our abutment teeth and there is no support to, to the crown. 
uh, in the daily uh, tooling, here will be some stress concentration. And because we know usually the margin error is the most thin part of the restoration. So it's has a it has a great risk of crack from this those errors. Okay, and the fourth the fifth thing we need to check is about the shoulder and about the margin. Uh, just like the left one, it's uh, recommended shoulder and margin. We can see the, the margin is very clear and the shoulder is rounded and wide enough for the restoration. But for the right picture, we can see for the upper jaw anterior abutment teeth, we cannot identify where is the margin. So when and also here are some pops uh, around the gene margin. So when we do designing, it's very difficult to design the margin for those kind of case. And even we design a case on this uh, job, it will have a great risk of crack from the margin error. So for the left picture, it's not recommended to do designing on this case and we recommend to talk with the dentist to do the impression or do design of do scanning for the patient again to get a more clear margin okay and here are another two common problems for the tooth preparation <coughs> most times for the anterior region we will see this kind of situation. And we can see all the abutment teeth have a very sharp edge, especially for the incisor error. And for the molar restoration, the most common problem is about the occlusal surface. And we can see for this abutment teeth, the flat are some um, holes, and you can see Actually, those errors are not prepared by the dentist, those middle part. So for this kind, kind of situation, if we do designing on this case, for the, in, for the certain occlusal site, the thickness will be not enough for those errors. And it will be crank. It may be crank from those errors because the thickness it's not is not enough okay so that's the first part about the model checking how to check a uh, shoot how to check the model how to choose a shoot mo shootable model for the the cornea restoration and then we come to the stand uh, the second part about the standard process procedure for the the cornea long bridge, the, the cornea blacks. And we know even in one brand, there are many different types of the cornea blacks. So the first thing is, if we want to make a long bridge, like for the full arch, we need to choose a shootable disc for the case. So we recommend to use the high strength material for the long bridges. For example, in our cornea family, we recommend to use uh, HT plus or ST pre-shade, ST white, and ST multilayer, and also the SHT multilayer. So we recommend those high strength materials for the lung bridges, and they can also be used for speed because for the high translucent material, the strength is only maybe 600 to 900 megapascal. So it's not enough for the long bridge. Long bridge is more than seven units. So there it will have a big risk for a crack. So the first thing is we need to choose a shootable disc for the long bridges. Okay, after we choose the disc, then we need to do designing for the cases. And in this step, we can also check the model again. 
we can check the thickness for the restoration and it's more it's much more it's it's uh it's easier in the designing software because in the designing software we can measure the thickness easily so and this for those two pictures it's and we can see the recommended thickness for the crown is about one millimeter to 1.5 millimeters but actually we recommend one millimeter uh, the reason is really we can get the best shade accuracy when the thickness is one millimeter because when we do r and d when we test the shade we will mill a one millimeter um, disc to center it and test the shade accuracy so if we when we design the crown and the thickness is one around one millimeter we can get the more accurate shade and we know for some cases one millimeter is too much so for that kind of case cases we need to make sure there are at least 0 0.5 millimeters it's for the strength requirement if the thickness is less than 0 0.5 millimeters the strength will be not enough even we see we say for our HT plus the strength is more than 1400 megapascal but if the thickness is only 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 the flexural strength will be much lower than that number so we need to make sure for the uh, the corneal restoration the minimal thickness is at least 0 0.5 millimeters for the strength Uh, of course the strength will also influence the shade for the pre-shade and for multi-layer blacks just like this and as I said when the thickness is one millimeter for example if it's a A2 disc when the thickness is one millimeter we can get A2 as a shade table but if the thickness is only 0 0.5 millimeter we can we will get a lighter shade and when the thickness is bigger we will get a darker shade than A2 so if, if we want to get a more accurate shade um, we recommend to use one millimeter for the crown designing okay and then it's about the connectors To make sure the connector has enough strength, we need to make sh uh, we need to make the cross section error of the connector has big er uh, has enough error, enough space. For example, for the anterior teeth, we need to make sure it's more than nine millimeter square, and for posterior teeth, we need to make sure the connector cross section error is more than 12 millimeter square square millimeter maybe <laughs> sorry so only when the connector is big enough we need we can make sure the strength between the two teeth is enough and it will not crack from the adjacent error connectors the height of the connector is more important than wise so when we design the connectors we recommend to design the connector like the left one the height is more than the wise and also the second middle one is okay but if it's like the right one it's not recommended because we know for the bite force it's from from vertical dimension from vertical di direction so the thickness of height is smaller for this kind of situation but if it's like this the thickness of the connector is higher and it will have a higher strength it's better for the bite force 
Yeah, and for some cases, maybe、um, we cannot get enough error for the connector, so we have to design the connector like this. In the lingual side, we can design the connector as a flat surface to make the connector bigger and to make sure it has enough enough error, have enough strength. And in the designing software, there is another、uh, function. It's called the anticipate milling for the sharp edges. And for the left one, for the this one,、uh, we used this function. And we、um, set this parameter for one point two millimeter. And after designing. You can see the crown is like this shape. Even if it's a sharp edge, the software will、um, make the sharp rounded like this. But if we don't use this function, the restoration will be very sharp in this error. And we know if we want to mill those those errors, it's not possible. Because our millimeters cannot reach the sharp holes, so if we want to mill the restoration, we have to, we must use those function. We need to, and we need to make sure this parameter is、uh, matched with your mini machine. For example, for this mile mini machine, we are using the one millimeter millimeter to mill the. Inside of crown, so we recommend to set this parameter, one point two millimeter, and this restoration we cannot mill this those part, and we have to do manual grinding for the inside areas, and it will increase the risk of crack, and we don't recommend this. And in the designing software, we can also set the Insertion pass for the different abutmentes, and it's easier. We just need to connect this one, the unique insertion direction for bridges, and then all the abutmentes will have the common pass of insertion. Okay. After designing, then we come to the nesting, and in the nesting software. Uh, here are some also some important tips we need to notice, and the first is about the connector, especially for the long bridges like the full arch. We need to make sure all the connectors、uh, on the lingual side are distributed evenly. For example, in this picture, we can see for the left side here are three connectors, and for the right side. Also, here are three connectors, so all the connectors are evenly distributed on both sides, and during centering, it can make sure the long bridge has a even shrink. And when we put a connector, we need to pay attention to the position of the connector. We cannot put a connector close, very close to the margin. Because, as I said, the margin error is the most thin part of the restoration. If the connector is on the margin, during centering, and because of the stress, maybe the margin will crack from the connector error. Okay, and then about in the designing soft、uh, in the nesting software. We can also change the center centering frame, and now we have two type of the centering frame recommended. And the left one is a traditional one; it's a hollow centering frame like this. And this for this kind of centering frame, the thickness is about one point five millimeter to two millimeter, <coughs> and. It's the thickness of the center frame is very close to the thickness of the、uh, crown, so we 
it can ensure the bridge and the centering frame have a in even shrinkage during during the centering and avoid some track problem and also we test tested another type of the centering frame it's like this shape um, for this kind of centering frame um, we and the, and it in the designing software, not not in the listing software. Software, for example, in the ExoCAD, we can add some attachment, like the round pin to the full arch, like this shape, the cross shape. And the diameter of the su support pin is about two point three point two millimeters. And for this kind of centering frame uh, some of our customer our labs in our factories and we find um, it's um, very, uh, it's very stable for this kind of centering frame so if you are interested you can also have a try with this type of the centering frame okay and for some Complicated cases like for the implant full arc, we know there are many gingiva, uh, there are many undercuts on the uh, out surface. For some mini machine, uh, they cannot mill the undercut cut. So usually after milling, the technician will do manual grinding on the out uh, for the out surface. But we don't recommend to do it like that. Because when we do manual grinding, if we don't do it well, maybe there will be some shaking and it will need to some crack problem. So we recommend you try to mill the undercut or the undercut error by the mini machine because it's much more stable and also it will have a better aesthetic result we can get the result just as uh, designing and we don't need to waste the time for the manual grinding and avoid some crack problem yeah and uh, yeah after milling then we come to the third step uh, coloring for the white disc yeah in this step um, it's not about the uh, crack problem it's about the shade problem because we know for the pontix and the crowns, the thickness are very second type. Uh, first, first way is uh, for uh, we will decrease the dipping time. For example, for the normal cases, for the normal single crowns, we will dip the restoration for fifteen seconds. But for the bridges, we only dip the the bridge for five to eight seconds. And for after this, we can make sure the pontic, the shade of the pontic is accurate. But of course, the shade of the crown will be a little bit lighter, and we will do some uh, uh, staining after centering for the crown. And the second way, second way is we can brush some diluent liquid on the pontic first, and then we dip the bridge for enough time to make sure the shade of the crown is enough and also we can avoid the darker shade of Pontic and this is a coloring method for the white disc it's not, it's not our main topic today okay. and for the implant cases uh, we don't need to do coloring uh, for the implant cases because we know the thickness for all the errors the thickness is much more than normal cases so for those kind kind of situation we can we recommend to choose a lighter shade black or a lighter shade coloring liquid for the implant cases like if we want to get a a2 implant cases we can just use the a1 disc and after centering uh, for the upper part maybe the shade will be a little bit lighter but for the cervical part the shade will be good will be accurate will match the shade guide 
after coloring the for the white disc uh, we need to do drying for enough uh, we need to dry the restoration for enough time before centering so we can use uh, uh, those two uh, uh, small devices to do the drying uh, and the drying time is about more than 60 minutes for the full arch and the drying temperature is about 90 city degree if not um, if not there will be some uh, liquid inside the restoration and during sintering there will be great risk of crank okay after okay after sintering then we can do after coloring then we can do sintering and some of our customer has asked asked us how to put the full arch how uh, they should put a restoration horizontally they lie down like this or vertically stand up like this and for those two situations we have made a test and we find there is not a big difference between the two ways so you just need to choose a way as you like and in the centering uh, the most important thing is about the centering curve the centering program especially for the long bridges we need to make sure the heating rate and cooling rate is slower than the normal centering and this is a recommended centering curve for Arconia high long bridges above 7 units and after centering we need to make sure when we open the furnace the temperature is lower than 300 if we open the furnace at a very high high temperature maybe 500 after we open the furnace the cold air will get into the furnace and when the restoration um, contact and um, contact with the uh, uh, come across with the uh, cold air the because we know the now the restoration is very hot so it will make crank because of the cold air so we recommend to open the furnace only when the temperature is lower than 300 especially in the winter you know the room room temperature is very much more lower and after sintering it's grinding in this step the most important thing is about the grinding method we need to do um, water cooling during the whole grinding process with the light pressure and grind in one direction okay and here uh, is a met disc diamond disc sometimes the customer will use the diamond disc to grind the adjacent error but it's not recommended because it's very sharp and after sintering the zirconia is very hot so if we use the diamond disc it will lead to some crank problem yeah. and after grinding we do staining and glazing in this step it's just like the sintering we need to make sure the heating rate the cooling rate is lower and also the opening temperature is lower than 300 and for long bridges we cannot uh, we don't recommend to fire the long bridges more than three units more than three times because if we the more the fire we fire the restoration the higher risk with the crank problem okay uh, that's the standard process for the um, long bridges and then we come to the last part about the case says analysis and here are some pictures about a crack problem and just the first one we can see the lingual side it has a crank and close to the connector error and then the second one is about uh, 
it's a crank from the connector error like this and the third case is a crank problem from the adjacent error and we can see the crank is very straight and also the fourth straight fourth case also a very straight crank like this but it's only a single crown and uh, here are two cases which have the crank problem during sintering and for the left one we can see it has a surface crank and also the margin error is not so good and for the right case it has a very flat crank like this okay so what we need to do if we met a crank problem and we know for the crank problem it can happen and uh, in every steps from milling to the finishing even sometimes uh, it, when it's in the patient mouth it will crank so one need, what should we do if we have a, a crack problem okay so first we need we can divide those steps into three groups the, uh, the crank the fracture before sintering during sintering and after sintering and if it's the crack before sintering we know it's the the cornea disc it's in the green state blank uh, blank and it's very fragile so in this kind of situation in this step air inclusion could lead to the crack problem for example if the disc is dropped down from the desk or some crash during the transportation so maybe the disc will have some crack, crack problem inside and sometimes when you meal the restoration you can find the crank problem like this it's a very flat crank so one of the possible reason is about uh, transportation and another reason of course sometimes if the disc has a quality problem it will have some crank uh, some flat crank like the right picture shows and for the left side sometimes during milling we can find if we find the surface or margin crank the most possible reason is about the window is uh, stable or not and the it the motor so the first thing we need to ensure the stability of the milling and the second step is a uh, the second thing is about the milling strategy the milling speed the feed rate so we can check our milling strategy for suitable param parameters and the third thing is, is about the milling burst uh, if the service knife is over um, we will have some surface crank or margin crank like this so we need to change the burst so it reminds us to record the service life of each bur in the daily work and when the mi when it reach reached the top service knife uh, we better to change the burst immediately okay and if we have some crack pro problem in the grinding step of course the reason is because the reason is the improper grinding method especially for this kind of situation when we put the connector very close to the margin error and when we uh, want to cut out the connectors it will have a great risk of the margin crack so we recommend to put the connector at least one millimeter to the margin okay and then the most situation is, is uh, we will find some we will find most crack problem during sintering so if we have this kind of a problem we here are some things we need to check the sintering program the sintering frame the collector position and the drying for white disc and 
For example, for this case, we checked and we find the centering frame is not so good. And we can see it's a solid centering frame. Because it's a solid part, so the thickness is has bigger difference with our restoration. So during centering, the shrinkage are very different for those two parts. And here are some stress concentration and the connector cracked from here. And for this kind of case, we find, we check the centering program and we find the heating rate and cooling rate is very fast. It's not the centering program for the long bridges, it's a normal centering program. So we need to lower down the heating rate and cooling, cooling rate for this kind of crank. <coughs> okay, and sometimes after centering, we will meet some crank problems like this. And the most, uh, most reason is about the diamond disc because we can see um, the crank is very straight just like the shape of the diamond disc it's very sharp like this sometimes the technicians want to make the restoration more natural so they will use this kind of tool to do the manual grinding for the adjacent error but um, because the zirconia is very hard so sometimes there will be some crank problem like this. So we recommend to do the adjacent error grinding before sintering, not, not after sintering. Because before sintering, it's much more soft, soft, and we can do the adjust much more easier and more safe, much more safe. Okay, so that's all the sharing today about the crank problems, how to, uh, what is the standard uh, operation for the long bridges and how we can avoid some crank problem and how to find the reasons for the crank problems. Okay, so that's all the sharing today and thank you for your listening and thank you for your time. And if you have any question, just uh, please send it to the chanting error and I will replay you now. Okay, I will check the, I will check the chanting error. Okay, so because uh, there is no question and um, so uh, that's all for the sharing today and thanks for your time again and hope you have a good day and thank you bye bye if uh, and if you have a um, further question maybe in the future you can contact with us directly okay okay so Bye-bye. That's all. Thank you.